Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, worship team. Can give can we give God a mighty hand of praise because God has moved in a powerful way. Uh, thank you, worship team. You have been amazing. Uh, I would uh, ask uh, our pastor uh, Jijo uh, to lay hands on them as they come towards uh, the rear side of this hall. Uh, let as they as they declare during the worship. Uh, Pastor Jojo has been laying hands on the people in this house. They were ministering to us on this podium. I don't want them to miss on that mighty move of God that just happened. So I request uh, Pastor to just lay hands on the worship team uh, and, uh, uh, and pray for them so that every spirit of abandonment and loneliness may leave. Amen. Uh, this has been a wonderful time. Amen. God has really been pinpointing and speaking. Uh, I think this was kind of a prophetic worship which happened right now because God is at work. Amen. We are no longer slaves. We are not abandoned. We are not orphans. You know, uh, the other day I was talking to a minister uh, closely associated with us and he was saying, uh, the spirit of abandonment, abandonment, the spirit of orphanness was brought into this world by Satan because Satan was closely associated and loved by God. Lucifer was very close to God in heavens. And when he lost that connection with God, he later found out that Adam and Eve were in that relationship with God. They were loved by God, which made him so jealous that he wanted to uh, bring in that spirit of abandonment and orphanness that he was experiencing because he was separated from the father's love. So Adam and Eve enjoying that was unbearable for the devil. So he brought in the vision and gap and distance between God and his people, which resulted in the spirit of abandonment. So right now, I think it was so powerful that the Holy Spirit pointed out this very rarely touched topic on this evening because God really want to bring someone close and more close and more close and hug them and, and immerse them in His presence. So I thank God for the move of the Holy Spirit. Uh, this evening, I would like to welcome once again everyone who is in the room and who is joining us online from different parts of the world. Uh, warm welcome and Christian greetings to you all. Uh, may God bless you. Thank you for sparing your time and uh, uh, joining us, us, us with worship. This year, uh, this is the first English service where uh, I'm ministering here. Uh, so I've missed you guys. Uh, so uh, this year, for this year, God has given us the leadership of this church, uh, the theme, uh, the year of crossover. Today, the Holy Spirit ha has, uh, uh, has been encouraging me to speak on the same topic. But before I uh, go into the word of God, I really oh, am excited to tell you that uh, we, uh, some of our leadership and some of our youth, they had an opportunity, wonderful opportunity uh, to go to Odisha and uh, uh, proclaim the gospel, carry out uh, the final great commission of God in that land, in, the, in that land of North India. So it's been a very blessed experience for a lot of people. They were all blessed. So uh, to give you a, a snippet of what happened there, I would like to invite our senior pastor, Pastor Jojo Daniel, to come forward. Uh, he'll, uh, yeah, I was not part of a trip, so he was uh, the coordinator and the leader of the whole trip. So he'd come and uh, he'll give you a snippet of what happened. Uh, please listen to it carefully. It would be a great blessing for you. Over to you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Greetings to all the precious name of Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It was a great joy and privilege all last whole week. Uh, we were in the mission field. According to Mass, chapter 16, verse 15 says, And he said, go into the world and preach the gospel. Wow. What a wonderful opportunity is preaching gospel is. You know what the great commission and the great uh, uh, um, opportunity and it is our obligation to share the gospel and preach the gospel all world hallelujah and we were praying la since last year Lord sent us a mission field and uh, you know we imagine many places to go but you know finally God 
you know, the end, end of the day, the everything turn around. Everything's turn around. We're supposed to go to Pune, but God turned to the Orissa. And I believe it is the work of God. Hallelujah. And as a team, you know, we had a powerful team. Uh, we were fasting and praying for all the mission trip. And finally, last Sunday, we left from here. It was the three days journey from here by road. Driving, we had a wonderful, uh, great, uh, anointed man of God with us. And when we reached in Orissa, we saw a lot of miracles. You know what? God opened many ears. And God helped them to, people to walk. They never walk. After 12 years, after 10 years, people start to walk. People start to hear. What a wonderful testimony. Hallelujah. You know, all glory, honor goes to God. Hallelujah. So I, it's my challenge. And I request you all of you. You know, many people living this world, spending their money, you know, living with a luxury life. Brothers and sisters, our God, the Lord's coming is very near. So we have to reach unreached. Hallelujah. We have to go to the people, the villages, and share the gospel. Let them receive Jesus Christ. Finally, at the end of the day, uh, the four village people got baptized, including our one brother. Hallelujah. And uh, it is not easy because the, the family who accepted Jesus Christ, you know, very tough. It was a very tough. And finally, whole and their family, they accepted Jesus Christ, the personal savior, and, and after some time, you know, we gave some Bible education about the baptism. And they said, Pastor, you know what? We've been going many meetings and we've been seeing the miracles. But today, today we want to take the water baptism. It was 8 o'clock in the night. As a team, we went to the uh, a canal. We had a, a beautiful canal is there. And we went there. You know, God gave me an opportunity to give the baptism. And thank you for your prayers. And again, we are planning to go to Orisa. And, uh, and the speciality of the Orisa, uh, 22 years back, our great missionary called Graham Staines and his beautiful children, Timothy and Philip, were matriarched in the place Orisa. So when I went and I, I asked the many people their names, people say, my name is Timothy. My name is Philip. And my name is Emmanuel. I said, how come this whole name came? And I finally understand because the one who paid the Amen value on the cro uh, cross of Calvary, hallelujah. The one who paid Amen the value in the Orissa, hallelujah, the land of Orissa. Finally, the people became Christ. And one of the greatest news, and I asked the pastor, what is the situation in Orissa right now? Pastor, where, wherever you can go to preach, there is no problems. There is no any issues. Wherever you can um, go into the village or city, you can put the paste of uh, poster, no problem. None of them will ask you anything. See, Jesus changed the state. Hallelujah. Even now, how many of you are really ready to go to the mission field? Brothers and sisters, we are spending our time in this world. Our Lord's coming is Definitely God will ask you. How, I mean, did you share the gospel to anyone? God gave you chance. God gave you money. God gave you facilities. Hallelujah. But you never get a chance to share the gospel. I'm challenging you today. Let's move around. Let's move forward. Let's go with the, I mean, with the, with the great commission. Great courage. Hallelujah. We can share the gospel. I mean, we can reach and reach for the kingdom of God. And may the Lord bless you. And uh, this was uh, our testimony. Uh, we will, uh, also, we'll have another testimony is coming probably next month. So, watch. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Can we praise God for what he has done in the land of Orisa? It's amazing. I was very particular. Even if I didn't preach today, I wanted everyone to listen to this and what God has been doing. Yeah, we had a crossover to Orisa just as our... Uh, as, just as our uh, uh, 
team of this year we crossed over to another state uh, god helped us to uh, stay there and establish the kingdom of god and i wanted everyone to listen to it because uh, we might be enjoying a good worship session we might be uh, listening to a preaching we might be all happy and contented with what we are doing but god wants us to step out and work for the kingdom of god so let's be inspired by what this powerful men and women of god uh, have been doing for the kingdom of god and i'm so inspired so i hope somebody who is watching uh, or someone in this room uh, would say that i am in for the next mission trip uh, if you're taking such a decision if god is and the holy spirit is moving you uh, to do that uh, that would be the greatest uh, uh, miracle that can happen in this meeting amen i quickly want to turn uh, to the word of god and the ministry to you uh, uh, regarding our theme uh, the crossover the year of crossover i quickly want to turn our attention to the book of first kings chapter 18 uh, verse 24 uh, i'll read it for you then the woman said to elijah now i know you are a man of god and the lord's word is the truth i'll read it once again now i know that, that you, you are, are a man, man of god, god and, and the lord's word in your, your mouth is true this is first kings chapter 18 verse 24 listen to me very closely most of this uh this this uh dialogue this exchange between uh, elijah and, and the, the woman, woman is, is that, that there, there is, is a, a great famine in the land of israel and the people are suffering uh, all the water sources are drying up there's no food anywhere so God asked the prophet to go into the house of a widow. And God tells him, I'm going to feed you there. And for three and a half years, God fed Elijah in that widow's house. Amen. And God, when the man of God went there, the woman was about to commit suicide. The woman was about to commit suicide when the prophet came to the house of this widow two people are entering that house at the same time the prophet is entering the house at the same time death is also slowly slowly entering into that house two people are at the doorstep one is death and the other one is a prophet this woman is about to die. She's coming. She's going to kill herself and her son after having her last meal. So when God looked down, he saw death slowly, 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 slowly entering into the thoughts of this lady. You know, death does not come in a man's, uh, it's not necessary that we are personifying death right now but it's not necessary that it came in a physical form it came into that widow's mind into her heart into her thinking stream as a thought the devil told her there is nothing left for you in this world right now everybody has abandoned you nobody is there to help you no relatives you have no husband you have no support you have no family as the worship team was ministering to us as Mahima was saying the spirit of orphanness was slowly, slowly creeping into her. And she started losing all her hope. And she was getting ready to die. At the same time, God said, Prophet Elijah, rise up. You know, Prophet Elijah is very comfortable. You know, staying near a river frontage house is my, my dream concept of how my uh, retirement home should be. Because river frontage houses are really cool. If you can stay there, you will see the scenery. There is a lot of cool breeze blowing. And, and you don't have to move a finger. Ravens will bring you food. That too, three-course non-vegetarian meal. Not some uh, ordinary meal. Elijah is, is enjoying there. He is having a time of his lifetime there. But God said, Elijah, enough of being in your comfort zone. Right now, my priority is a widow. It's a woman. It's a helpless woman who is sitting at, at the porch, porch of, of a house, house and thinking, thinking about, about committing, committing suicide. suicide. So God 
quickens Elijah. He said, go. Go to Sarafat. Find that woman. You step into her house before death steps there. Oh, I feel in the spirit of prophecy. I can prophesy right now that God is going to intervene into places where death is getting ready to enter. God is going to enter there before death captures certain people. If the prophet would have been at least 30 minutes late, I think she would have been dead. If the prophet would have been 15 minutes late, the widow and her son would have been dead but already. No, but God said, God asked the raven to stop. God asked the brook to dry up. And God asked the prophet, go, 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 go prophet, go Elijah. You can no longer stay here. You have to cross over. From his comfort zone, you know, actually Elijah is hiding. Elijah is hiding. This is a perfect space for him to hide. God said right now the more important mission right now is to protect that widow come on somebody God gives so much value so much value to that helpless woman so he asked Elijah to cross over now this happens in this chapter that Elijah goes to the house and she tells him that we are going to eat the last dinner and we are going to die Elijah said to her do not be afraid. Go and do, do as you have said. Only make me a small loaf from it and bring it out to me. And she did like that. Verse 14 says, For this is what the Lord of God Israel said. For this is what the God of Israel said. The flower jar will not become empty and the oil jet will not run dry until the Lord sends rain on the surface of the land. You know, two things stopped. Bread stopped coming. The ravens stopped bringing the bread. And the water brook dried up. When one source stopped, another one dried up. God is opening another two sources that will not dry out. Do not be worried about the water brook that dried out because God is going to open a jug of oil that will not dry up till the rain hits the land. Do not worry about the, the, about the bread that the raven has stopped bringing. God is going to fill the jar of, sorry, God is going to fill the flower jar and it will not become empty, empty until the rain hits the ground. Raven will bring how many, how many, how many bread can a raven bring? Three? Four? My imagination is running wild right now when I say four. I can hardly imagine one raven bringing one bread. So four or five ravens would be bringing four or five breads for Elijah. But as long as there is flour in this jar, as long as there is flour in this jar, this woman can make how much ever, how many ever bread Elijah wants, this woman can make and give him because this flour jar is not going to run out. So do not worry about the limited resources that is stopped for the time being. God is telling me to tell somebody tonight, God is opening up an unlimited resource for someone because this is the year of crossover. From limitations, you are crossing over to unlimited blessings. You are crossing over to unlimited provisions in the name of Jesus this year. Because the Holy Spirit says this is the year of crossover. I quickly want to run, run more in deep into this word. Amen. I'm liking this. This is really good. Amen. Listen to me very closely. This time, after, after this happened, she and her household ate for many days. The flower jar did not become empty. And the oil jug did not run dry according to the word of the Lord he had spoken to Elijah. Listen to me very closely. Not only her, not only her son, but her entire household was eating from the same jar. 
I was wondering where were this all these people when this woman was going to commit suicide? If some of them would have stretched out a hand to support her, she would not have even thought about it. People abandoned her. People sidelined her. But God is telling me, God is going to cross you over into a place of importance that people who sidelined you, people who did not support you are going to come to you and you are going to support them. The question is that when God is ready to open up, God is going to open up that unlimited blessing on your life. Will you be ready to open your heart and open your door and uh, support those people who did not support you at the point of time? It is very easy to be bitter. But God does not want us to be bitter. God says, I'm opening an unlimited blessing so that people who betrayed you, people who sidelined you, who, people who did not care for you, they're going to come back to you. Are you ready to open your heart, open the door of your house, open your jar, open your jug, pour out oil, pour out flour? And on all these people, the woman had the mindset even to care for the people who hurt her. Let me, let me move quickly from that part. And all this happened. There is multiplication happening. There is divine multiplication happening. From limited resources, she is crossing over to unlimited blessing. And this is what happened. After this, the son of the woman who owned the house became ill. And this boy died. I'm reading verse 17. And 18, she said to Elijah, man of God, what do we have in common? You have come to remind me of my guilt and to kill my son. Sometimes this happens to us. Sometimes this happens to us that we forget that God has stopped an imminent death from happening in this family. In our lives, we could have been dead already. But God has saved and snatched us from the, from, the, from the sharp teeth of the death. This is exactly what happened in this house. She was about to die. And this man of God came into their house and stopped that death from happening. And now this boy has become ill. This woman is turning against the man of God. And he, she's asking him this very cruel question. Have you come here to remind me of my guilt and kill my son? Isn't this the man who God used to stop death from happening in your family? If you want to cross over, God says, sometimes we are too ungrateful. Sometimes we are too blinded by the problems of today that we sometimes forget to be thankful enough for the miracles of yesterday. When, when problems and trials and tribulations become too much, can we pause for a moment and stop worrying about the problems of today and take a moment and thank God for the blessings of yesterday? If we are, if we are ready to do that, God says there is definitely going to be a crossover. Listen to me very closely. This woman was about to die. She was about to commit suicide when this prophet came into this house. But God blessed her. God gave her a flower jar that will not become empty. God gave her an oil jug that will not run dry. People who abandoned her, people who forsake her, are now coming into, their, into her house for, her, for their meal. And you know, verse 19, Elijah said to her, give me your son. So he took him from her arms and brought him to the upper room that he was staying. This house was at the point of destruction. Now this house has an upper room where Elijah is staying. You know, this, they, they started, if you, if you talk in today's terms, they got a basement. They got a double storied building right now because God has really blessed her. So Elijah came in 
they were about to commit suicide now god has blessed them so much they got a basement they got an upper room now elijah has uh, listen to me very closely this this verse says elijah took her took the boy to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his own bed now this family has become so rich and so blessed that they were about to provide elijah with an upper room and a bed of his own and and in this in the middle of this blessing she's asking him have you come here to remind me of my guilt have you come here to kill my son actually she has crossed over too many paths from destruction from suicide god has brought her into blessing and and affluence and she is having a, a having a great blessing at this point of time but even in that moment even even after having so many crossovers even at this crossroad some of us are failing to believe god some of us are doubting god and his ability that even in this crossover even in this crossroad god is a god of crossovers you know what happened elijah took the boy into the room and pray to the pray to the lord please let this boy's life return to him and the lord did so elijah brought him down from the upper room into the house and gave him to his mother elijah said look your son is alive this is a context of the word that we just read then the lady said now Now I know that you are a man of God and the Lord's word in your mouth is true. The woman had so many crossovers but she failed to believe. But Elijah on the other hand God is telling Elijah, Elijah, I used you in the last season to stop an imminent death. Elijah was brought into this family and the authority was upon him to stop the death that was slowly coming into that family but by the end of this chapter elijah is also crossing over when when someone is not ready to believe when someone is not ready to acknowledge and be grateful on the other side the prophet who is ready to listen to god's voice the prophet who is ready to obey god God told him in the last season you stopped death that was coming for this family but this season I am going to use you to oh my god I don't know how to speak this in this season I am going to use you to cast out the death that has already happened this season I am going to use you as a warrior to drive death away from this family in this season i am going to use you to bring back life into the same place where death has already come and established its existence god says to me if you are ready to believe and if you are ready to stand firm in the promise of god this year the crossover is going to be so great you going to do something greater for god than what you did in the last season last season death was coming and elijah stopped it but this season death has already come and elijah is anointed and is powerful enough to cast out the death that is already in the family God is telling me to the people who are listening to me right now this is a year of crossover where you will cast out death from your family you will cast out death from your finances you're going to cast out this dead works in your family members and you are going to call forth the life of God because this is a year of crossover there are a lot of crossovers mentioned in the in the chapters ahead i i i have i just have enough time to speak about one more here we see a crossover in finances a crossover in authority a crossover in ministry we move to the next chapter elijah shows himself to ahab 
and tells him that the Lord has told me that he's going to prove that who is God in this country. You know, this is a next level of crossover. Till now, Elijah was ministering in the household of a widow. For the last three and a half years, he was casting out death. He was performing divine multiplication. God used him to uh, create a, a space where the flower will not run out and the oil will not dry up. All this was happening in a household. Inside four walls of a house. But God said, Elijah, now is the time to cross over. Show yourself to the king of the country and take the battle into a national level. Come on, this is crossover. This is crossover. The one who, the widow who refused to believe, the widow who was ungrateful, she is still staying in the house. She has got some material blessings for sure. But she is not part of God's plan for the next season. Or she is not part of God's plan for the next stage. I don't want anyone who is listening to me right now to be stuck. I want you to cross over with God into the next stage of anointing, next stage of ministry, next stage of God's plan and its execution. The prophet who is ready to believe is crossing over to the next station. God said, now take it to the national level. Enough of playing domestic. Oh, and he showed himself to the king. And he said, I'm giving you a deadline. Tomorrow morning, gather every prophet of Baal that you can find in the country and we are going to have a duel. Oh, he's taking the challenge to a national level. He is challenging the king. He is challenging the entire devil's army like a single man army. And he says, here I am, Elijah, the prophet of the living God. And I'm going to prove who is God in Israel and who is the true prophet of God. Because God told me this is the season of crossover. Oh, shaka rabala mashanda rabasi andara. Come on, somebody. This is a year of crossover. You're not going to be in the same circle anymore. God is going to expand your circle in the name of Jesus. Oh, rabala mashanda riantal kabari antala siara. Listen to me very closely. Elijah, as the king, he he gathered everybody together, and and he built a proper proper sacrifice proper altar and he prayed at the time of peace offering in the evening listen to this prayer very closely Elijah the prophet approached the altar and said the Lord of Abraham Isaac and Israel Today let it be known that you are God in Israel and I am your servant that you were what and I have done all these things. Short prayer. Some prayers are very long. It's, it's, it's last two chapters. Here this, this prayer is one single verse. Short prayer. It's powerful. Exactly. Amen. Short and powerful. This is another, another uh, characteristics of someone who has actually crossed over into the next season. He's not going to pray a long prayer because he knows that God is right beside him. God is going to answer him. God is not going to send him into this challenge if he's not going to answer him. If God is sending you into this challenge, into this crossover, God is definitely going to answer you. And and you know what happened? This Bible, I, I like this translation. This Bible says, Then Yahweh is fire. Malayalam Bible says fire from heaven. But this Bible translation, they made it very clear. Then Yahweh is fire. Fell from, fell and consumed the bond offering, the wood, the stone, and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. It was Yahweh's fire. Oh, Elijah was Elijah was introducing a new new dimension of God to the people of Israel. Yes, 
people of Israel did not know Yahweh who answers with fire so far. God, oh, Elijah said, there is a God who answers with him. If you don't know him, I have crossed over to a season where I can I introduce you to God who answers with fire. Come on. This is to the ministers here, to the people who want to be in the ministry. I want to tell you that the Holy Spirit is telling me this would be the year of crossover where we will be introducing a form of God that is not known to many people. God has always revealed Him in different forms, in different timelines. He was Yahweh, He was El Shaddai, He was El Roy, He was Nisi. He had different roles, he had different names. But God is telling me in this season, God is going to use some people to introduce a different form of God. Different variety. Amen. God is one, but He comes in different forms, different packages. You're going to introduce God in a different realm altogether. In different perspective altogether to, to different, different people from different walks of life. Let me, let me close this very quickly. And the fire of God. Yahweh's fire fell down. And when all the people saw it, they fell face down and said, Yahweh, He is God. He is God. Amen. I quickly want to run to this words 40, 41 and 42. Then Elijah ordered, seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let even one of them escape. So they killed all the prophets. I don't want to explain there. Verse 41. So this is where, this is where it, it got, it's kind of stuck, got stuck with me. Verse 41. Elijah said to Ahab, go up. Listen to me very closely. The land didn't have rain for the last three and a half years. And the Lord has shut the heavens so that it will not rain. But here the prophet is telling the king, Ahab, get up, eat and drink. For there is a sound of a rainstorm. Hello. The prophet is telling King Ahab, I can hear... The sound of a rainstorm. Oh. Right now, Elijah has not started praying for the rain. Elijah has not yet started praying for the rain. He, even before praying, he's declaring in faith that I can hear the sound of a thunderstorm in my spiritual ears. This is a crossover where you cross over into the next realm of faith in the name of Jesus. Come on, receive it. If you want to get a greater level of faith, you're going to hear something in your spiritual ears. You might not be able to hear anything in your material ears. But your spirit, oh. My God, Holy Spirit is telling me this is a season of crossover where you cross over into supernatural senses. Some people who are listening to me right now are going to develop this new gift from the Holy Spirit. You are going to develop supernatural senses. You are going to hear things in the Spirit. You are going to see things in the Spirit. You are going to touch things in the Spirit in the name of Jesus. Oh, let the supernatural senses be open right now in the name of Jesus. Can the worship team please come here and help me praise God for a couple of minutes? In the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is going to open up supernatural senses. Supernatural senses. Somebody is interested in supernatural senses. Somebody wants to hear things in the spirit that is not happening. In the material, in the material realm, nothing may be happening. But God is telling me, Elijah is if you're the Elijah, you're gonna hear a thunderstorm. You're gonna hear a thunderstorm. And he's telling the king of the country, 
Come on, come on, come on. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Ahab, a thunderstorm is coming. Thunderstorm is coming. Thunderstorm is coming. Your miracle is coming. Your deliverance is coming. Oh, you can hear that. Oh, I can hear the Holy Spirit saying, it is a year of crossover. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. I don't usually say this, but I see in my spirit like a coat of fur, like a coat, like a clock, like a mandal, like a mandal that was in Elijah. There is something in this house right now that is dropping down from heaven. I pray that it may fall on everybody who is listening to me right now. May the anointing fall. May the clock fall. May the next assignment fall on you. Get ready for your next assignment. Next ready for the crossover. Sister, get ready for your next crossover. Worship team, get ready for the next crossover. Because the power of God. that he could equip him with new tongues with a new assignment that he can send them to all the world and looking at those people the other people said the one who once who turned the earth upside down even I wonder alone Oh, the people who turn the earth upside down has reached even our place. This is what was the testimony about the apostles recorded in the book of Acts. Come on. This is crossover. Get ready for the crossover. Ready for the crossover. If you're ready for the crossover, take a step in faith. Tell them I'm crossing over. I'm crossing over. I'm crossing over. Oh, Rasmai Taraba Raba Raba. Lamta Reiki Sibian Taraba. Can I take five more minutes, Pastor? My God, this is crazy. Urama Shanta Raba Sianda. Le Koromo Sianda Raba. Chapter 19, verse 15. Lord said to Elijah, Go and return. By the way, you came by the wilderness, Damascus. Where you arrive and anoint Hazael, the king over Adam. Anoint Hazael, a Gentile. Anoint Hazael, a king of Adam, a Gentile king in the wilderness of Damascus. Does it ring a bell? Does it ring a bell? Till now, Elijah was playing it in the national level. God said, it's a year of crossover. Go anointing another nation's king. God 
that if it's a year of crossover, you're going to cross over international. I feel the power of God in this house right now. Hey, prophet, hey, man of God, this is not a national crossover. This is an international crossover. Spirit of God. I love preaching this. Amen. God said, you go back the way that you came. Take a U-turn. We usually don't like U-turns. But God said, sometimes U-turns are there so that you can cross over to the next realm. Sometimes U-turns are there so that God can take you internationally. Let that anointing fall on this people. Let that anointing fall on this people. Let that anointing fall on this people. Let that anointing fall on them. May God take them internationally. situations. Listen to me very closely. I want to close on the spirit of orphanless note. I want to quickly close but Holy Spirit is, is motivating me. He's pushing me to touch that spirit of orphanless that my wife uh, spoke about during the worship service. You know what the Bible speaks about Elijah? Softly. Softly, softly. You know what the Bible speaks about Elijah? Elijah is a Tishmanite from Tishba. That is all what is mentioned about the mighty prophet Elijah in the Bible. Bible does not mention anything about his lineage. Bible does not mention anything about his father. Bible does not mention anything about his mother. Bible does not mention anything about his sisters, brothers, his relatives, nobody. Bible, you cannot find anyone, any blood relatives for this mighty prophet Elijah. Elijah is an orphan. Elijah has no last name, no middle name, no surname, no family name. Right? Elijah had nobody. Elijah had nobody. Nothing is mentioned about this great man of God. Elijah, the Tishbanite from Tishba. That is the only thing that is mentioned about this man. But you know what? And the king of Samaria, the king of Samaria, Ahazia, Ahazia, the king of Samaria, I'm talking about, talking from 2 Kings chapter 1, verse 2. Ahazia, this is, this is international, okay? This is not from his, his, his country. 
he's crossing over into the next realm this is from judea he's crossing over to samaria and then to aram and here it says ahazia second kings chapter 1 verse 2 ahazia the king of samaria has fallen down from his room and he is sick and he has sent his angels or his messengers to go to Belzebul, the god of Ekron, to know whether he will recover from this injury. And as this messengers was going, verse 3, but the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, the Tishbenite, even now, nothing is mentioned about Elijah, his family background, we know nothing about who he is. His bloodline, nothing. There is nobody for Elijah. God told Elijah the Tishmanite, go and meet the messengers of the king in Samaria and ask him, is it because that there is no God in Israel that you are going to inquire of Belzebul, the God of Akron? Therefore, get up and go back to king and tell him he will not recover. And then Elijah left. Then the king's messengers didn't proceed to Ekron. They comes back to the palace. And the king asked him, Why have you come back so quickly? They said, A, a man came to meet us. And, they, and he asked us to go back and tell you that you will not recover from this illness because you have sent to Belzebul rather than sending for God. And the king asked him, do you know this guy's name? Any address? Any ID card? Any visiting card? Any, any, any information about this guy? They said, no, we know nothing about that guy. And then the king asked him, what? So, this, this question is very, very important. What sort of a man came up to meet you and spoke these words to you? So, these people didn't know anything about this prophet who delivered this message. So the king asked them, at least tell me how did he look? Describe this guy for me. So he had nobody, no lineage, nothing. He's an orphan. So nobody knows anything about him. The king said, at least tell me what this guy looks like. And they replied, a hairy man with a leather belt around his waist. And the king said, it is Elijah the Tishmanite. And the king said, it is Elijah the Tishmanite. Elijah had nobody. Elijah was an orphan. Nothing is mentioned about him in the Bible. But he was recognizable. He was recognizable by his dressing style for another king. The spirit of orphanness, I cast you out right now because people might not recognize you right now. But God is telling me, even kings are going to recognize you by the way you dress up. If it is that word, that should be Pastor Dijo. Amen. If it, if it's that prophecy, then it should be Sister Anu. If it's that prophecy, then it should be Justin. Oh, if it's that prophecy, then it should be Jacob. If it's that vision, then it should be Sister Minu. If it's that worship, then it should be Sister Mahima. If it's that rhythm octa badness, then it should be blessed. If it should be that basis, a sound mixing, it should be Jeevan. If it's that vocalist, then it should be Gibson. If it's that lead guitarist, it should be Ebenezer. If it's that pianist, it should be Sahin. Oh, come on. The spirit of orphanness that tells you you're not God. The spirit of orphanness that tells you you don't have anybody. God is telling you, God is casting that out right now. And is putting his love into your hearts right now. God is healing the spirit of offeringness right now. God is telling me to tell you this evening that he is going to introduce you to the kings of nations and you, you would be recognized even with
the words that you've spoken. That accent must be, that accent must be, Sister Fabas. You know, that writing must be Pastor Jijos. Only he will write that powerful words. Hey, that music, that music should be, should be from Lion of Judah. Only they can bring out such powerful music. <laughs> recognizable, 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 or fat, recognizable. Hey, can you do a flashback gesture right now? Flashback, or fat, now recognized by kings. Flashback. Abandoned, not loved, sidelined. Today, uniquely recognized, uniquely accepted because of the hand of God, because of the medal. Receive your blessing right now. Receive your healing right now. Receive your crossover right now. Receive your mantle right now. Because God is going to make you crossover. This is a year of crossover. This is a year of crossover. This is a year of a mighty crossover. 